Today I'm going to talk about parallel transport and I'm going to talk about parallel transport in Riemannian geometry. What does that mean? We're going to move a factor in a curved uh, manifold. So if you move factors and a factor can be defined as such, right? You have a factor V with components V mu and base vectors E mu, right? And if you have this factor in normal Euclidean space, you can move this factor at will and nothing will change, right? If you have a factor, for instance, and you move it in Euclidean space, there's a factor here, V, you move it in Euclidean space, you have your EY vector base vectors here and your EX base vector here. So your factor V can be expressed as VX, right? Where this is the VX, that's the VX part, and the VY part is over there. It's this piece, okay? That, that height, and the VX is that height. So you get your factor, factor V equals VX EX, where EX is the base vector, plus V I Y E Y. Okay, that's how you represent a, a vector in Euclidean space. If you move that vector to another location, for instance here, you still get exactly the same components and exactly the same base vectors because these are not changing in Euclidean space. EX and EY will not change and so will Vx and Vy. If you parallel transport this vector, it will not change. In curved space-time, that's not the case. If you do this in curved space-time, your not only the vector components will change, but also the base vectors will change. They will both change. So in Euclidean space, it's perfectly fine to define differentiation with respect to vector components as such. And you just say, okay, it's kind of like differentiating a function, right? There's no difference here. You have the differentiation of V mu, which are the components of the factor, times x nu, times differentiated towards a certain direction, right? x, y, or z, or something else. And this is just a normal definition of differentiation. x plus delta x minus x divided by delta x, right? You can also do that with a function here. You can say a function x plus delta x minus fx over delta x. That's just the definition of differentiation. That's not possible in Riemannian geometry or in curved space. The reason is that the base vectors change, right? And as a side note, I use implicit uh, summation here. I use the Einstein convention here where I implicitly sum over variable, over the components and over the base vectors, okay? And I did that here as well. So if you have a V like so, you can define this as V mu E mu, right? Where V mu is Vx and Vy, and E mu is Ex and Ey. And you do that also in curved space time, okay? So that's the Einstein convention. Now, if you want to transport a factor in a Riemannian geometry, in a curved space manifold, you not only have to take care of your components, but you also have to take care of your base vectors. And in order to do that, you, you would like to see that two rules are being met. You want to make sure that if you transport your V mu vector here, the vector components of this vector, you transport them to a new location. So you get the V tilde, right? If you transport this vector to X plus delta X, where it was originally at X, you get new components called V tilde mu, right? So going forward, that's what we will mean by V tilde mu here. And if you subtract that from V mu here, you would like to see them proportional to delta x. So if you move in the, in the r direction, it needs to be proportional to delta r, and we will see that later in, example, in an example. And if you move it in the uh, phi direction, it better be proportional to, uh, to phi right, to delta phi here. What you would also like is that it is linear. So if you have a factor v 
at position x and there's another factor w at position x you add them up you parallel transport them right and you get a new factor there or factor components there it better be the same then that you first transport v then transport uh, w then add them up in the transported location x plus delta x that better be the same and that's what's reflected here and if you adhere to these two rules you can essentially set something up like this so your parallel transport of the factor v mu at position x and you parallel transport these factor components to these new x plus delta x location with v mu tilde that's identical to v mu minus some linear combination of delta x's and your original factor okay and this linear combination is reflected in all these numbers and these numbers are chosen such that uh, the base factors that also move when you move from point A to point B in a curved space time that that difference is also being captured okay so that's important for completeness I give you the definition of Christoffel symbols which I'm not going to use today uh, but I'm going to derive this in a different video but just for completeness that you can see that it only depends on the metric for instance okay now so a useful definition of a differentiation in a complex in a covariant way and it's, it's called covariant differentiation if you differentiate on a manifold on a curved manifold whereas you call it normal differentiation if you do that in a flat space time okay so this covariant differentiation is defined as follows you take a mu at x plus delta x uh, original factor you subtract subtract this transported this parallel transported factor at x so you have a factor v mu factor components at x plus delta x and you parallel transport a v mu at x you get this tilde one right so you get those new components you subtract those from each other now you can subtract them because they are at the same location right there's this is at location x plus delta x that is at location x plus delta x you cannot really do that here because if you have curved space time the base factors also always also change so you cannot really compare this with this you can compare this with this however because you parallel transported this factor and you got this as a result so subtract those with delta x and you get your covariant differentiation yeah and if you fill this form out in here you get this and this is really covariant differentiation and that's also denoted with a delta sometimes right if you covariantly differentiate with a nabla uh, if you covariantly differentiate with respect to x alpha you usually write it like this okay so that's the first so now let's take a look at an example how can we calculate these uh, Christoffel symbols or these connection coefficients so these symbols here are called connection coefficients or Christoffel symbols right these numbers over here and they are called that way because we are looking at the Riemannian geometry if you do Riemannian geometry you will end up with connection coefficients that are Christoffel symbols okay so we have these uh, this example which which we are gonna explore to see how these connection coefficients can be calculated without using that formula that I gave so we're not going to use this formula we're just going to use it by looking at the definition and see what happens in a picture okay and I think that's very insightful and it gives you a lot of insight in what parallel transport really is and what covariant differentiation really is so we start with the point x mu and we do that in flat space time but we use polar coordinates and you will see that some of the components will be non-zero because of that so we have x mu which is r cosine phi r sine phi that's just a polar coordinate that's just this location in polar coordinates okay r phi that location can be reflected as such if you embed it into uh, euclidean space the metric you get out of this is this and I'm not going to explain this here today 
but if there are a lot of questions on it I can do a separate video on how to calculate this metric but this metric is quite important because that tells you how space uh, really morphs from location to location for instance here because there's a one in front of it GRR as a consequence is one here so if you move in the R direction there will not be any difference with the VR factor and we, we will see that later but in phi direction is definitely a difference because of the r d phi and not just d phi okay so we have our factor v which is phi r d d r plus phi phi d d phi okay we're going to parallel transport this factor into our new location at r plus delta r so we get a phi tilde r d d r in the new location r plus delta r so we move from this factor v will be moved from here to here okay plus phi tilde phi times dd phi in our new location okay and we're going to find out what these components are we're going to calculate those let's start with what it is here so phi r so let's start what the components are in this for this vector here so in the direction of r dd r is actually in this direction right so if you would write the base vector here you get a ddr that's in that direction and then perpendicular to it here you have a dd phi okay dd phi and don't mind the lengths but that's in that direction and the ddr is in that direction so we're now going to calculate what vr is and if you look at it it's in the direction of ddr so it's just the projection of this phi vector on this line which is phi cosine theta okay and that's what you see here and because dr squared equals 1 we're already okay here okay for phi phi it's a little bit harder to see you can do exactly the same the dd phi is in this direction so you get a phi sine phi but you have to divide by r and that looks a little strange but it does make sense and let's take a look at why that makes sense if you calculate the length of a vector that's only operational in this direction for instance in the phi phi direction we can do that and we can say okay phi phi at that moment is and let's assume that this is correct so we say phi over r sine pi over 2 and then we don't have an r direction right because it's only in the direction of phi so we have this vector okay and we say that let's say that that's okay let's calculate the length of this vector how do you do that well you do that with phi alpha phi beta g alpha beta this is the length squared of the vector that's what this is okay so we fill it out by the way phi r equals zero right we stated that because in this case specific case just to show that this works uh, theta is pi over two so therefore phi r equals zero if you fill that out here right you get zero if theta is pi over two this portion will be zero okay so you get phi 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 times g phi phi okay and that's all you get because all the other ter terms are zero so you get you fill this one out phi squared over r squared sine pi over two equals one right so you get this times this that's phi squared over r squared times r squared g phi phi right that's this term here g phi phi r squared and that gives you exactly phi squared right and that's what you need because that's the length of the factor after all the length of the factor here is indeed phi right so this is length squared phi squared so that's why you need to divide by r right so okay now we know that this is correct and this is correct so now let's take a look at phi tilde r so now you're going to parallel transport and that's what we did here we parallel transport it and you can see that this factor is exactly parallel to this factor why is that well it's parallel transported in flat space time right it's flat space so of course this will be parallel transported that way like you do it conventionally if you transport a factor in a parallel fashion you will do it like this this is exactly parallel so that's what we what we do here so now you can already see that phi tilde r because that one has a one here is not going to change if you move in this direction 
the projection will not change. So VR will be exactly the same as it was before. Okay. For V phi, that's obviously not the case. What you do there is you say, okay, we're going to do the same as we did here. So you can quickly say, okay, V phi tilde equals, right? V sine, again, that projection here, this piece, but now it's R plus delta R because we are in our new location, L plus delta R here, R plus delta R. Okay, so that's our new location. This is the same as sine phi <coughs> over R times R, R plus delta R. That's exactly the same, right? This is phi R, this piece, right? That's phi R times R, R plus delta R. And that's what we see there, right? And now you can say, okay, this is the same as top and bottom divided by um, R. So you get delta R over R. You tailor expand this to first order and you get this, okay? So at first order, and you can do that at first order because delta R is really small, okay? So at first order, you get this. And now we have the ability to read off the coefficients from our definition that we had before. So this is our definition on parallel transport. So here you go from, let's start with R. So V tilde R, let's fill that out. Make this an R, make this an R, and make this an R, okay? And you can already see there are no other components here. So everything has to be zero here. If there's an R up top here, it better be zero, right? Because there's nothing there here. So the RRR will be zero and the RR phi will be zero as a consequence. Looking at phi tilde, we can already see that, okay, that's phi phi, which we have here. So the mu is now phi. So now we're gonna look at the phi terms, right? Phi in the top here. Those are the terms we're gonna look at. There's only one term when it comes to phi phi. So this one needs to be phi also. So you fill that out, phi. That's there, it's symmetric, right? And there is a phi phi here. Um, and there's a delta r here, of course. So you get the r phi term. And that gives you one over r. So you can immediately read off, and as a consequence, the other one is zero. So you can immediately read off your Christoffel symbols through geometry, okay? And we did this by moving into the r direction. So now as a second example, we're going to move in the phi direction to calculate the other Christoffel symbols, right? Again, we do the same. We have x mu here. We have g here. V is obviously still the same. The parallel transported one is now in the direction of phi, right? So not in the direction of r. r plus delta r is no longer there. This is r. And now you move in the direction of phi. You rotate a little bit like so. And that's what we did here. So you go from your original phi factor here at r phi, you go to your phi tilde one through a rotation by an angle of delta phi. <clears throat> if you do that, you get, of course, for your phi r and phi phi, they are still the same from this location. Nothing changed. But the phi tilde r now is rotated, right? And what is the R now? Well, R is now the projection on this one, and this line has been rotated, right? How much has it been rotated? Well, theta minus delta phi, right? So now this angle is smaller because it has been rotated by delta phi. So now you get, for the tilde version of R, phi cosine theta minus delta phi, okay? Now you use some, some trigonometry and you can work it out to being this, right? It's just a product of, it's a sum, summation of two angles and you can work that out. And if you do that nicely, phi cosine theta is again phi r. Phi sine theta is obviously r times phi theta, phi phi. Okay, you see that over here, times delta phi over here. And now it's again in a form that you can read off your Christoffel symbols. Now you do the same for phi. If you look at how phi is being affected by this rotation, Right, that's this little piece over here. So you get phi r is phi cosine, uh, sorry, phi sine theta minus delta phi over r. Okay, r has not been 
adjust it. R is still the same. This is R. This is also R. So we don't get an R plus delta R here, for instance. But what we do get is a, a theta minus delta phi here, because that angle got smaller, okay, for the sine. If you work that out, you get something similar. Yeah, you get again phi tilde phi equals phi phi, the original one, minus a component. And this component, of course, again, can be translated into a Christoffel symbol. So again, you use your definition on these two. You can start with R. So these are the R components for this. So you fill out R here for the, the new R, the phi tilde R over here, which is phi R over here, plus this term. Here is a minus. So, of course, the term will be minus R, okay? Because there's a minus here and there's a plus there. So if you put a minus here on your Christoffel symbol, you will be okay. So your R phi phi term will be minus R and the other one will be zero. And similar for phi, and you will find that your phi phi R term will be one over R by comparing it with this formula and the phi 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 term will be zero. Okay. Okay, I think this is a great place to stop. I hope that you got some insight in how uh, how this works, how to do parallel transport, and how to do covariant differentiation. Okay, so if you like this video, please like and please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.